everybody, and welcome to the Sunday edition here on the Fifth Column Network. I am uh, your host for today, Trezene. I am joined by, with, joined by, with, what? I didn't do well in English. I'm joined by, with, Jantina Anderson. You guys may remember Jantina from maybe our first few episodes uh, where she was here talking about the Dove ad. Uh, She is a cultural advocate as well as an HR professional, and we are so happy to have you here. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, And if you watch many of our Sunday editions, you'll see that she's commenting, giving us great commentary (laughs) in the comments. I was just telling her we should compile them for a Jantina Says kind of (laughs) little segment because she'd be giving us the real goodness in the comments. So I'm so glad that you're here today. Uh, For everybody out there, if you didn't see the promo for today's show, we've got a great lineup of topics. First, though, we're going to talk about uh, the Golden Globes and the Time's Up uh, hashtag. Um, Mm -hmm. That is kind of the next phase here in the hashtag Me Mm -hmm. To movement. As you can see, this Right here uh, is, has been the Twitter moments or Facebook, yeah. uh, I guess, profile pic of the, of the, meet, of the Time's Up movement. Um, and we want to talk about it today because if you've been paying attention to it at all, they put out kind of like an open letter for the Time's Up uh, and have been calling on all women of all colors and sizes to be sisters and come together to end sexual harassment in the workplace. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there on the table, Jantina, <laughs> that dear sisters, let's come together, really kind of ticked me off because okay. I'm looking at these women who are now the face of this and I see a woman of color. What's her name? America Ferreira. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, we have, I can't remember her name, but she's uh, the chief of staff for Michelle Obama. That's, she was Michelle Obama's chief of staff. Um, Eva mm-hmm. Longoria, is that right? Yep. Yeah. Who is a woman of color as well. We have Shonda Rhimes, as we all know, is a woman of color. I don't know who this beautiful black woman is, but woman of color. And then right here in the bottom, <laughs> down here, we have Reese Witherspoon, the only white face on here. And I'm like, wait a minute. So we're all sisters now? Come that on, white yeah. women want something? I, it ticked me off, Gentina. It, it really did. We've been having issues of sexual harassment in the workplace. All of a sudden, white women come out of nowhere. I shouldn't say nowhere. A-list, gorgeous white women start saying, hey, this happened to me. The whole world comes together, and now we're all sisters. And I'm like, ah, this, this, is, this is ridiculous. What, what were your thoughts when you saw this new movement and, and all of this here? I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> so give me one. None of which are too positive right now. I'm really trying to find the silver lining. Honestly, I would say, I guess the exposure that's being created Mm -hmm. is good because Mm -hmm. with that exposure, with the platform that they've created, hopefully something will change, you know, to the the position of women truly being, having some power in Mm -hmm. these types of situations, Mm -hmm. or at least being able to address them and hold others accountable. But we, as you pointed out, the majority of the women in this picture are of color. Yeah. And when you think about any movement that's advocating for people of color or just individuals in positions mm-hmm. where they're disadvantaged or mm-hmm. minorities or others, mm-hmm. it's typically women of color that are coming to the rescue to save everything. So in some regards, it doesn't surprise me that this is what we see. Why we always got to be the rescuers? Why? Pull out the cape. Why? <laughs> when you said, why do you else to do it? It's, it's, it's very disheartening yeah. that we're called on to rescue. And, but when we need rescuing with whatever issue, no right. one comes running. White women are not coming to run right. to us when we're having issues for right. our community. It's, it's right. very disheartening. Um, I'm kind of tired of it. I'm sick yeah. of seeing it, and I'm actually you tired too over there. Exhausted. Exhausted. <laughs> I'm actually tired of black women continuing to do it. Yeah. I'm tired of seeing just women of color going, "All right, okay, we will do it." Yes, this is together in hope that maybe they'll come along when we need them, and mm-hmm. they don't got a history of doing that right. at all. Right. It's very frustrating. Right. Unless, unless it's like you said, advantageous for them. 
And in, in, in this situation, they've already proven that it's advantageous for them, mm. right? I mm-hmm. mean, when we look at all the cases that have been brought forth today with the Me Too campaign, mm-hmm. and even those that have been highlighted on the, the Time cover, mm-hmm. the person that created the campaign wasn't even on the cover. Oh, no, you're right. You're <laughs> absolutely right. You're absolutely the, right about that. The cases that have received the most attention mm-hmm. are not women of color. When some of the women of color have come forth and said, me too. I was also a victim of Harvey Weinstein. Mm-hmm. They were immediately silenced, and Harvey Weinstein pushed back against them and called them a liar, yeah, among other you're things. Right. You're absolutely right. Because two women of color came out against Weinstein. Lupita, who was the other one? I can't remember uh, who the other lady was. Salma Hayek came out. Yes, yeah. yes, you're absolutely right. And he called her a liar as well. Everybody yeah. else, he was pretty silent. Yeah. Trash. Yeah. Just <laughs> trash. Let's talk a little bit more, though, about workplace harassment, uh, because you are our HR professional. And so really, at the end of the day, this is a workplace harassment issue. Um, They're really talking about sexual harassment in the context of actually going to work. And we've seen, um, you know, Hollywood is the, I guess, the context in which we're looking at it. But even with the Time's Up movement, there Mm -hmm. was farmers. It was a farmers Mm -hmm. union, you know, that came up with the letter saying, we have an open letter, we want to talk about these issues. What are your thoughts on how relationships, romantic relationships are dealt with in the workplace? I know that here at FCN Family, we had some nice banter on Twitter a couple of weeks ago on what should be allowed in the workplace yeah. and what should not. I am yeah. of the position that if you are a boss and in a position of power, right. you should l- refrain from having any dating relationships at all with your subordinates, particularly yes. your direct subordinates. Yes. Because you just can't divorce your position and how that power play works in the context right. of dating and sex or whatever. Right. Uh, the men didn't really agree with that. They're just like, what? We're adults. We should be able to do what we want. But what what do policies in the workplace look like to try to deal with this issue? Mm-hmm. What are some best cases and what are some not so good ones? So I can't speak to them all, mm-hmm. but based on my experience, mm-hmm. um, if there's a situation where there are two individuals that are dating mm-hmm. and there is a power difference as far as their level within the organization, mm-hmm then that's a problem, whether the individual is male or female. Mm. And so either, first of all, they should come forth and say that they are in a relationship if you Mm. decide to have this relationship Mm. within the workplace Mm -hmm. so that either the supervisor or HR can appropriately deal with the situation or address the situation Mm -hmm. because it's up to us to remove that power structure. So either the individual... And more than likely, it's the person that's in a managerial position that needs to move. Because if you move the individual that does not have the same level of power, then it can look as if you're disadvantaging that individual because they don't. So there's things that the company wants to do. So it's not like they're like, ah, you can't be in this relationship, but let us see what we can do so that you can have this relationship. Right. Oh, well, man. not necessarily that we want them to have the relationship, <laughs> but if, mind you, in some situations, uh-huh. HR and the manager need to minimize the liability of whatever situation. Mm-hmm. So in order to do that in that particular situation, yes, you want to remove the individual that has power from that position given they've decided they want to have this relationship. So you guys, oh, wait, we got a comment? Yes, you have a comment on Facebook mm-hmm. from Miss Leah I always say it's like Warren Beatty. So yeah. It's just Leah Beatty. Yeah. I, I always see the name and I always spaz out when I see it. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Leah. It's Leah Beatty. And she says, what upsets me is how people are so surprised about how bad sexual harassment is in the workplace. Where have you been? <sighs> the, yes. Well, let's go to that just real quick. Okay. All right. uh, I, I, too, am surprised when people are like, what it's this bad and i'm like yeah i could see it being this bad i think we have a a clip or a picture or a video of matt lauer uh-huh. is that accurate can we show that yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh good old matt Right, so 
So the case. Bending uh, over like that, it's a nice view. Yes. So he is actually talking to. He's on the set, as you can see, right? He's putting his ear thing in, mm -hmm. and it's Meredith. How do you pronounce her last name? Vieira. Vieira? Yes. Yes. So she's in across from him. She's bending mm -hmm. over to do something, and he's like, "Oh yeah, keep doing that. That's a nice view." Right. <laughs> like you're at work in front of people. This yeah. is not someone that you're with and you felt completely comfortable and okay right. to say something like that. Right. And you know that you've been allowed to do this. Yeah. Where you feel that empowered that you can just say that and yeah. it's not supposed to be a big deal. And I'm right. like, you know, how many how much does this happen in workplaces? You know, right. we see it in these contexts where men have a lot of power. Right. And we're seeing how some people are like, whoa, this is really happening. From an HR perspective, um, is it as prevalent as it is being made to seem as we're watching it on TV and being reported? Right. That's a tough question to answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think there are instances that people have dismissed as okay because mm. they're fearful of coming forth that may be if you really sat down and and took a, a conscious look at what happened mm -hmm. or what transpired yes it's prevalent but if you look at the the law and the language and the definition that they have around harassment mm. then you might say oh well that was just a, an incident or they didn't mean that the oh that wasn't the intent yeah or it only happened once yeah it was so just teasing it yeah wasn't uh, if it made you uncomfortable that's on you it doesn't amount to something that's like a, a cause of action for us to right. take action and that, i right. think that's kind of problematic right where it definitely you know i think the era that we're in now is women want to go to work to work we're not necessarily there to find a spouse or a uh, friends with benefits or casual right. sex partner or whatever right. you know type of relationship or situation right. there is that isn't what's happening and nevertheless right. men are still treating it as a dating pool and even as I say that let me just make it very general because <laughs> there are women who are sexually harassing uh, men as well in the workplace sure. um, and even men on men women on women sexual harassment right. you know so but I think you know, people are treating the workplace as a dating pool, and they probably shouldn't be. Uh, you, you, you know what I'm saying? I think it's that, and I think individuals are just comfortable. I mean, I, I do mm. believe there's mm. a level of ignorance mm. with, you know, this has been okay elsewhere, or I've seen others do this, so it must be okay, where there's a culture of acceptance around it. Eesh. So we have to get to a point where we start one educating people and being firm you know with the line stops here like you you can't do this this is not appropriate even if it isn't legally termed as harassment we're saying it's creating a culture where harassment will happen or could definitely happen because you know of the the ease in which we're giving it room to happen what's the line well that clip was definitely an example. <laughs> like, that's way over here. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> if you, you have someone who's making comments that I think that the average person would mm -hmm. interpret as offensive, somebody should be saying something, whether it's the cameraman that was, you know, behind the camera when he mm -hmm. said it and recorded it, mm -hmm. or even if it didn't make the cameraman feel uncomfortable, he should be able to put himself in the shoes of mm -hmm. Meredith or another woman who mm -hmm. may may have been uncomfortable even mm. if Mer Meredith didn't say anything because oftentimes when you're the the victim or the target of those comments mm -hmm. you tend to shrug it off I mean you mm. it hurts right. and it bothers right. you but you shrug it off and you keep on going because you don't feel that you have you know a leg to stand on if you were to press charges or bring a claim up that's very true so speaking of that uh, now that Me Too has kind of transformed it the times up uh, one of the things that uh, has come about is an actual kind of next steps. So right. the women in Hollywood have come together uh, to one, create a fund right. uh, for victims of sexual harassment if they want to uh, sue uh, right. or something like that. So I think as of this past Friday, they've raised $15 million 
wow. uh, in a legal defense fund to help pay okay. the legal cost, right? Because okay. we all know that that could be an issue. Where you're like, I don't, I can't afford right. to go through something like this. They right. can, right. but I can't. Um, and then also uh, to help pay for if people need to break their non-disclosure agreements. So, you know, a lot of these women or men or whomever, they endure sexual harassment and then they're like, ah, I'll give you some money. And if, you know, in exchange, here's your gag order, if you will. You can't talk about it, right? right. So um, encouraging women to break their NDAs with this legal defense fund. They also have on the list um, wanting like to pass legislation to deal Right. with sexual harassment um, right. and so I'm looking for details on what that might look like <laughs> yeah you're not alone <laughs> like okay you know I, I'm pretty sure they're still in the first stages of okay let's lie we got to get lobbyists we got to get people in there to try to pass this but right. in your mind what would you be looking for in the details of what this legislation should have in it I think we need legislation that takes a closer look at what sexual harassment truly is. Mm. Because I think right now, in order for it to be um, a legal offense, the bar is so high that it's hard for anyone to have a valid claim. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so in order to really change the culture mm -hmm. and give women who are in these situations a better chance of feeling as if they are empowered to come forth, mm -hmm we have to kind of broaden the definition and mm -hmm. not make it loose, but just so that these incidents that we know are wrong, that we're able to hold people accountable who are the aggressors in those situations. Yeah, the bar is really high. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, look, read it before we came into the studio right. and you, you really need to show like hostile environment. Right. You really need to show unwanted sexual advantage, advances right. it, beyond teasing, beyond, right. you know, just off the hand, com off hand comments. Right. Like, OK, these are off hand comments. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. It, it's very, very hard. And, you know, if something happens, like, let's say, you know, we were talking earlier, if someone exposes themselves to someone, you know, you kind of got to go say something right then, you know, right. so that you can at least say I was timely. Right. Right. If you wait, you know, a part of any legal claim is, OK, how long did you wait? You know, what is it really that bad? You know, because right. you're trying to prove that it was hostile. It, it, that it's that is that's a lot. Right. That is a lot. So you're you're wanting uh, any legislation to maybe say uh, it can it can be one incident. It doesn't have to yeah. be a pattern. Right. It doesn't have to be a history. Right. It doesn't have to be screenshot, if that makes sense, that someone can come and say something and it'll be taken seriously. Right. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, good, <laughs> good luck getting that through Congress. <laughs> well, by the way, they have their own legal defense fund for sexual I'm harassment. Sure. They're fighting. They do. There are many wow. cases pending in Congress for congressmen misconduct in the sexual oh, arena. So yeah. good luck. Yeah, yeah. Lord have mercy. Yeah, that's that's a bit much. And even if it's not at the congressional level, mm -hmm. then let's look at companies. I mean, companies create corporations, mm -hmm. create policies. They have procedures. They have guidelines. Mm -hmm. And Yes, they're kind of governed ultimately by what the federal government right, says, right. but they, they also have power that, where they can create standards within the workplace. Mm. So it, we don't have to wait on Congress to do something. What if the corporation came forward and said, yeah. you know, this is the new bar. This is the new level. Who in Hollywood would be responsible for creating that to govern that workplace? <laughs> okay. <laughs> she like uh, black. It's, it's, it's the Screen Actors Guild. The screen Isn't it? It's the guild. Yeah. It's the, the guild. guild. Mm -hmm. The guild mm -hmm. uh, and, and all the unions. It's just all the unions. So th they would have to be the governing force over it because you can't make studio pictures mm -hmm. without union involvement. So okay. it would be those people that are really at the forefront of that type of movement uh, and the culture shift. Okay. It would definitely be but that's what we have, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming some of these people are in some of those roles, oh, yeah. and they're yeah. advocating yeah, the for this. Yeah, the guild kicked Harvey Weinstein out. Like they, okay. they say, well, that's good. Him, yeah, they were <laughs> okay. one of the first they were. Uh, organizations they were. 
to actually act was actually Good. revealed against him. So, yep. Awesome. Well, I like that a lot. I think that's a good place to end this particular segment on we need to look at what corporations are doing right. and then definitely extend that into other places and not wait on Congress because I don't think that's ever <laughs> going to happen. Thank you so much, Dantina, for no joining problem. us. You're, it's always a pleasure to have you. Isn't she so stylish? She's so oh. charismatic. I love her so much. You're always welcome to come back here on the Sunday edition. Thank you. Uh, I'm Trezene, and we're going to go to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we are going to go into our second story. I believe the revolution is coming on screen. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We'll be right back. When I mix a record, I want to make sure that everything is sonically pleasing to the ear and everything has its own space. I know it looks easy, but this is years and years of hard work. I love my old lady. My old lady love me. She be driving me crazy. Little place that I got to She's a beast in the kitchen. She fix breakfast and bed. And there's no competition. She's the best with the head. She keeps the Scooch. Swizzle. Yeah. Sticks, we got one. Straight up Talk to him, Gucci I ain't thinking about these bitches But they thinking of me Which is nigga out the hood And they know I'm a G Every king need a queen So I got me a queen We one hell of a team I'm the man of the dreams Most people will only respect what you do When they try to do what you do And fail at it Hey, welcome back, everyone. This is the Sunday edition. I am the Revolution. And with me is I would, Cole. I would say always. We're not always on screen it feels, together. It feels like we, we do a lot together, though. We, like It feels like it. Yeah. yeah. So I would say with me, as always, is kind of accurate. It's, it's very apropos. Apropos. Yeah. I want to be pretentious. It's Sunday. It's the Lord's Day. <laughs> I have no idea what that has to equate to pretense. Mm-hmm. But maybe mm, the fact that... Church folk put on airs. Yes. Not profess <laughs> <laughs> too much. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Sunday edition, our news magazine show that kind of gives us liberty and editorialize our thoughts and opinions True. of the various social happenings of the day. Yes. Is base, what a summary. Yeah, is that a good summary? Yeah. Is that pretty good? We're going with that. But that's how we're going to play this right now. Ladies and gentlemen... Uh, there's nothing that, uh, grinds my gear. No, I'm joking. Uh, but there's nothing that has happened on social media that has tickled me totally pink and green. Mm. Uh, what? What? Ebony? What's happening over there? Nothing. Mm. Just are you just listening? Is that just? But you're reacting though. And your reactions are really big. <laughs> they are broad. You're sawing the air. The eyes are a rolling. <laughs> oh God! Here he goes. There he goes. There he goes. I just I feel I feel it coming. You feel it? it whatever it is. Okay. Well, I don't want to shout out my sisters, and so because it seems as though on Twitter mm. uh, there has been a call of an action to boycott said Black Panther film. Fake news. Fake. Oh, this is totally fake news. <laughs> Uh, because, but, but, but why? Well, good sir, uh, there seems to be an Africanized Negro by the name of Michael B. Jordan. Very popular. He used to be on a television program on HBO Home Box Office, mm. where he was a young man in a drug city, drug infested in city. The game. In the game, as it were. And became very popular on this program. I believe it's called The Wire. So now he has been cast in the Black Panther film mm, mm. where he is not the Black Panther because he was too stupid and anxious 
to wait a second before he jumped at the Fantastic Four, but that is neither here nor there. However, someone has started a little belly here mm. that he is dating someone of a different hue, ethnicity, and racial identification. <laughs> and so, as it were, black women, mm -hmm. seemingly, mm -hmm. seemingly, seemingly, the Negress mm -hmm. has taken taking calls right. and they said we must boycott this film we shan't be seeing it we shan't participate when a co-star not even the real star <laughs> that's, to that's, somebody in the somebody film somebody in the film doesn't like i heard a camera assistant <laughs> also was dating a white woman oh we gotta shut this down <laughs> shut it down so that's what happened so a picture surfaced yeah. uh, michael b jordan uh, was dating mm -hmm. an Instagram uh, model. Okay. I don't yeah. even know that's how that's not, a profession. That's, that's, yeah, not, that's a, not a thing. That's not a thing. And we, we need to... I won't acknowledge it. I, I, I won't. A person on Instagram who has lots of followers. Is that... What that's you, a thing. Instagram yes, a, a popular a Instagram popular user. Instagram user. That's their new name. Okay. You're not a model. You're not a model unless no. you're getting paid and, you're, and Instagram isn't paying you. Yeah. What you... Please right. tell me you're not signed to Ford. Right, because you can get advertisements. Money. That's fine. Then you're That's a model fine. on that advertisement. Yeah, you're a spokes spokeswoman. You're a spokeswoman. You're, mm -hmm. Yes, but she ain't that. She's an Instagram hoe, and <laughs> she is somebody on Twitter called her an Instagram hoe. Yikes. Speaking of which, uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's see. So uh, let me go back first. Let me go back. Okay, so apparently this happened on Twitter. Uh -huh. uh, Black Twitter was going. Oh. Now, was it women and men? Because you said women, but I saw some tweets from men that also yes. were like, oh, no. Yes. You, okay. you, saw, you saw that. Mm -hmm. You saw both. Yes. Um, but this, is the, this tweet is where I found it to be the genesis. I don't know. If you all are out there watching and you said, no, 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 it was another tweet, please uh, let us know in the comments. And make sure you comment and everything like that. Anyway, we need you to uh, respond to us or else Input. our self-esteem is... <laughs> right gets low just like instagram whole likes yeah so <laughs> this, this was the first tweet okay. that I, that i saw right okay. so it's from uh we're gonna shout her out uh shayla jador shayla jador i wonder is that her real last name mm -hmm. if it is uh more power to awesome. her uh when michael b jordan fans see his girlfriend they gonna cancel him the same way they cancel michael ely Tay Diggs and Jesse Williams, mm -hmm. uh, and that was on, on one first, one eighteen on the first, first of the year. That was on the first of the year. So this this uh, Twitter user uh, made that post first, and then we s started to see this. Oh man, did it cut it off? Who this person was? Mm -hmm. Okay, well Michael B. Jordan thinks he's slick, trying to keep his uh, exotical. Is that a word? Exotical, yeah. Exotical white IG ho. See, yeah. see. So that's a thing. That's the thing. IG ho a is a thing. It, hey, it takes two to authenticate anything. <laughs> Me and her have authenticated her as an IG ho. As an IG ho. <laughs> so exotical white girl. IG ho girlfriend, a, a secret since Black Panther coming out. I see you, B. This was actually from a um, a woman, a black woman tweeter, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A real black woman tweeter. I I, I checked her, her name was like uh, Rudy Huxtable something, but you can't tell. Like in this day and age, no, nah, you can't tell if it's bots, if people mm -hmm. are creating right. a startup. And so I want to get into a, that. Hey, listen, I want to get into that. So um, if you look up Michael B. Jordan, you gonna see. A lot of black men saying black women are mad at his white girlfriend, but you don't see not one post from black women complaining about his white girlfriend. Well, we saw we two. just saw. We yeah. just saw two. So wrong. So you're, you're the you're Internet's wrong. taking L's. The Internet, the Internet is not undefeated. Uh, this person, XO Sweet underscore dreams. Hello, I am a black woman, have been <laughs> for the past 30 years. I am also not offended by the race of Michael B. Jordan's girlfriend. Those of you boycotting the Black Panther are fucking stupid. Have a great day. That is a black woman tweet. Have a great that's, day. That's yeah. nice, nasty. That is not. That's, that's real. That's no not bot a bot. Can, no. No bot can be that nice, nasty. No botty. No, no botty. <laughs> Hashtag no botty. Hashtag no botty. Um, can, I, can I credit you? Yes. Can you, did you just coin her? Yeah, I did. 
I did. Did you just? And you can appropriate it without my argument. Oh, I'm definitely going to appropriate it. Mm-hmm. Later. We'll talk about I'm that I'm going to explain you. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mike, Michael B. Jordan is a sellout for getting a Latina girlfriend. Now, look now. Mm-hmm. She's gone from being white to Latina. Mm-hmm. Girlfriend, LOL, uh, where was that same energy for Serena Williams, And this Eve, is a male. And Janet Jackson. This is a man. This is a male. Listen, some people have uh, literally copied and pasted that and put it on my Facebook. That same status. That, yeah. Now I know where they got it from. Yes. Black men. Black men. Yeah. yeah. So, so these were the, the comments made. Um, yeah. Ebony, you clearly said fake news. Fake news. This is fake news. Like, I... <sighs> I, my first instinct was people yeah. who aren't going to watch this because they're not, they weren't into Black Panther anyway were ones who started this whole movement. You had a different oh, I have theory. A, I have it's a very conspiratorial. It's, it's a conspiracy. It's very radical. Yeah. Just like me, Please. Ebony. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> yes. I saw your, I saw them Twitter thumbs, a thumb in. And I know you, cause you, wait, you just come for me. Why are you in the studio, y'all? Clown. Oh, okay, you didn't. You said y'all. Okay, okay. I'm gonna be gunning, boy. She quit. So here's my theory. Uh huh. Right. Here's my theory. So I'm a part of. I tell anybody that you know I enjoy fandom. I enjoy films. I enjoy comic books. That's why FCN brought me in. Right. right. I have a long history of enjoying comic books, mm-hmm. video games, action figures, cartoons, everything that has to do with fandom. Um, so this is my thought. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a group of people mm-hmm. who was very disappointed that their fandom film did not perform mm-hmm. as expected. And what film would that be? That film would have been the summer release of the Justice League. Oh, yes. And a lot of people, there were a lot of lines drawn in the sand mm-hmm. with Marvel and DC fans, yeah, yeah. right? And yep. it was trash. It was trash. And everybody kept saying, oh, Marvel, all the Marvel fan boys, they out here doing this. And, they, and it, right. they were saying, so the conspiracy started way before this theory, right? So Thor had come out before that. Right. So they, so they couldn't take aim at late. Thor. Yep. It was too late, yep. right? Then all of a sudden, here comes these rumblings mm-hmm. easily a month before its release, mm-hmm. right? And we, we're we hearing a lot of black women saying, uh, I could care less. I'm still going to see the film. Essence Magazine mm-hmm. went so far as to say, hey, I don't care who he's dating. We're all going to go see the Black Panther. Yes. yes. I do believe that there is some form of studio people collusion to get any type of negative. Like this film, it's almost, yeah. if you pay attention, this has been like Barack Obama's ascent to the, no, to the presidency. <laughs> it was like, there's no dirt, there's no mud on this guy and on this film. It's all been positive. And then here comes this little slice of petty pie that, mm, it was delicious. Mm. I, with a little thin slice of cheese, mm. I want an apple pie with a thin slice of cheese on top. <laughs> Only you know what movie that's from? Yes. Hey, hey, hey listen, Chappelle. Oh, hey, oh. hey, that's I why. That's why we. Okay. That's why we. That's why we F with you. That's you get the F in the C N. <laughs> you you get all the F in the C N. Okay. <laughs> we F C N with you real hard. Real hard, Chappelle. So I legitimately think that there were people out there, mm-hmm. cre- and I would love to find out if that is a bot. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. But wh- what is that? Like, it is it even fake news? Should we even turn this over to me? Is it like something that is yeah, just no, funny? Yeah, no. It's it it is it is a feeble attempt at trolling. Yes. Um. It, yes. it really didn't have much legs. Yeah. You know, even even with the publicity or whatever it got on Twitter, mm-hmm. it didn't it didn't carry. It didn't carry. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't think there's much to turn over. No matter what the source was, it was. Yeah. It was feeble. It was weak, and it didn't work. Yeah. And there's everybody that was gonna go see that movie, still gonna see that movie. Uh, and, and now I think whomever's efforts it was, and for whatever reason mm-hmm. it was, it completely backfired. Yeah. You galvanized yes. this, this its core base of because what does that have anything to do? I don't know. Like every single thing with that movie has to be associated with. Like, you are so, it's like, yo, this is the blackest movie 
ever. It was yeah. the the whole story, people. The whole story of Black Panther was created by a white man. A white man yeah. created Wakanda. A white man mm-hmm. created Wakanda. So that would actually be the reason to boycott, <laughs> if anything. <laughs> this ain't this ain't black culture. This is white manufactured. No, go ahead. You could have finished it with the bullshit. Um, you you paused it. I I saw your lips. You had you a, saw that you had exactly. a you had a big yeah. yeah this right. Yeah. Like when we actually have those same countries mm-hmm. that are fantastical mm-hmm. on their own. Yep. You know, sans uh, vibranium mines from right. out of space. Right. You know, hmm. they gave them money and influence, yes. which is dope. And I just want to say this about that about Black Panther. That okay. always bothered me. Right. Mm-hmm. I wish. That the vibranium wasn't their whole, like, that mm-hmm. these people were technologically advanced and everybody, like, they almost kind of, right. kind of put that um, Egyptian mythology, that space yeah, and mm-hmm. with the pyramids and all of that yeah. onto them. Yeah. And that they were actually the more advanced ones and they left that civilization move back over here and they helped everyone around the world right all of these fantastic stories were based in the wakandans yeah, yeah, yeah. and then this meteorite came in and it was like oh we got this that would have made them to me even more powerful right just like jesus christ it's like you know was he a real man and you know like let's take all the magic in the you know mm-hmm. uh harry potter stuff off of okay him, right? okay and let's make him a real dude mm-hmm. like he's just a real he's guy he's a real guy he's a real guy who loved god and he was preaching the gospel okay right okay and they was like look man we're gonna let you off this cross right if you say that you he's like nah man i can't like mm-hmm. i would be a hypocrite and he died his dumb ass on the cross because he just oh wait what well, listen i'm not getting struck down for your foolishness right? i said if he was a real man if he was I'm saying if man. he was like me, this because was hypothetical. I said hypothetical. I didn't say I didn't say magical Jesus. Right, okay, okay, I, right. You want me to? This one you have a producer. See, right? It's like right, shut right, it down. Right, all right, that's it. Right, that's it. Move, that's on, it. On to the next one. On to the next one. Speaking of on to the next one, are you ready to move on? I'm ready for this discussion. You just look. She's like, you better be. <laughs> she got that Bob Dole clutch. Listen, she, she Bob Dole says we're not gonna. I swear she almost walked on this set. <laughs> she wants to throw that pin at me. She was like, boy, you're not messing with the brand. No, 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 because no, if it hit me, it won't hit you. Black women have aim. See, you didn't have a black mama. Black mamas know who to hit and when to hit. She ain't a black mother yet, but it starts somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It starts somewhere. Yeah. She got cousin and niece yeah. sniffing yeah, something. She... Yeah. yeah, so, okay. Moving on. Uh... <laughs> Please. Please. Uh... So this week, hello. This um, this week, everything started to really bubble over mm-hmm. um, when it came to this Bruno Mars release of a remix yeah. to a track that he had done off his 2016. What's the name of the album? The 2016. Uh, 24 Carat. 24, 24 Carat. Carat. 24 Carat. Uh, he had a track called Finesse. Yeah. He did a remix, and it had Cardi B on it. Mm-hmm. And what started with that is people started to once again talk about Bruno Mars's. Uh, potential culture vulturing. If anyone out there that does not know what being a culture vulture is, it's such a hard uh, yes. two words. Alliteration. Alliteration. Do you do you want to explain what a culture vulture? Vul- 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 a culture vulture. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll start, and if you need to chime in, you can. So mm-hmm. basically, to my understanding, a culture vulture is someone who takes someone else's culture. Yes uses it to, you know, prop themselves up in some way, Mm -hmm. uh, typically in social media or actual media, um, and does not, you know, give credit to where they got it from, Mm -hmm. does not even, you know, a tip of the hat, it's just like, yo, this is, this is my thing and I'm doing this thing without, you know, acknowledging who actually created it. Okay. So the next person, thank you for that. The next person I want to mention is to, the next person is Justin Timberlake. Uh, he he rele- he's releasing his album. What's what's the problem? Man of the woods, man of you guys have the same look right now, bro. Yeah, I was trying for it. Are you trying? Are you trying for the? I'm bringing sexy back. Is that his voice? No, Justin's voice is that's more what like it looks mine. like. No, okay. Just if this was Justin, like I'm bringing sexy back. That's yeah. that's, <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> so go ahead. What, what's the name of your new album, Justin? Man of the woods. <laughs> Why, why man in the woods, Justin? I, I'm from Tennessee. Oh, okay. 
fuck. So is this a, a heritage album? Is this is this a homecoming for you, Justin? Yep. <laughs> so uh, I'm talking minimally. <laughs> so what can we expect? I don't want to ruin the mystique. <laughs> oh, you don't want? I can understand that. Uh, much like someone that you adore, Prince. Mm. Is that a, is mm-hmm. that a, is that safe to say? Oh yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Justin Timberlake. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So these these three individuals have been cited, and Cardi B. Uh, has been cited for yes. being a culture vulture and things like that, and Justin Timberlake, uh, <clears throat> Bruno Mars. I've seen it a lot on Twitter, especially last year. What, what did he perform at the um, Grammys? Right, he performed. Oh at the yeah, Grammys. he definitely performed at the Grammys. At did, the Grammys, did he do that Twenty Four Carat song? He did a med- uh, medley. Oh right, he did a medley. Right, he did a medley. Right. He did did a he medley. Include a Prince. He did. He did. Yes. He did, uh, Let's go crazy. Yes, he did. Which, excuse me. Excuse me, because people went crazy. I didn't even comment on Twitter. Yeah, I did. Because sometimes Twitter people just. Yeah. But his that that was a that was a brutal beating. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> with with from the no Twitter from the Twitter with from with no intellectual addition. It's just base level. Oh, okay. So his his performance was was bad. That Prince rendition was crappy. Well, it's no, it's, we it's crappy. It's, it's good. well. Here's the, here's the problem. Let's say this, and I want to move on. When Prince does something that's amazing, yeah. And when anybody else tries it, you you can't play the guitar as well as him. You can't sing as well as him. You can't dance as well as him. So it's if it's not at least mm-hmm. on that level, it's not good. So that's, that's so this opinion. and this goes. I'm gonna bring this into our current discussion. Yeah. This is when you don't have your own originality. Yeah. And so you're trying to do what they do yeah. instead of doing you and bringing your spin onto what they did. Yes, like Michael, like Prince, like me. You know what I mean? Like, I, like definitely. You know? Yeah. I mean, oh. I got the Billboard numbers to prove it's, it. It's in there. You know? So I just we want to put that out there. I don't think we put them up there. No, I had I, them, and the file yeah. got deleted. Yeah. By DC fans. As well, they should have. You know? So here's here's my thought. Let's let's get into this. Yeah. These people and others and being a culture vulture, but let's really talk about them. Mm-hmm. I want to say this. Bruno Mars identifies as Puerto Rican, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, Benny Hanna <laughs> here. What's her name? Uh, Cardi B. Cardi. Cardi B. <laughs> I don't know. She, just, I don't know. she, she identifies as a, a Dominicana, right? Mm-hmm. So, I have said for years, I miss... Puerto Ricans, I miss uh, Afro Latinos mm-hmm. in hip hop. Mm-hmm. If anyone did their history, I wasn't there at the birth and the emergence of hip hop in the to mid to late seventies. And hip hop actually started in the sixties. I mean, you can trace it to so many different, you know, elements. Uh, Calypso, you yeah. can, gospel. Yeah. It's it's all there, you know. Um, but nevertheless, actual the street music in New York, I wasn't there at the genesis of it. But I was there as it rose up in the eighties, and. And doing my homework, everyone knows that Puerto Ricans are the are literally neck and neck with African Americans mm-hmm. in the creation and foundation lane for hip hop. They were some of the best b boys. Crazy Legs mm-hmm. is Puerto Rican, mm-hmm. and he is one of the great. He is known throughout the world as our. He did the dance moves for uh, the other chick that was passing that was faking as being black, but she really was black, but didn't want to tell nobody she was black. And then we caught her ass, and we was like, you black! And Jennifer Bills, flash dance. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, because okay. she was passing. Right. <laughs> Jennifer Bills, we know what you... I got a, I got a black dog. <laughs> listen. Listen. Yeah. This knows... Yeah. Remember when me and you got into it as a teenager? I want y'all to know this real quick, because I don't care about my rants. He... One that we was watching Saturday Night Live, and I'm gonna put you out there. And I was like, "Oh man, they got a new black chick." He's like, "Who?" I was like, "Her." He's like, "She's not black." I was like, "Dude, she's black. She's not black. Her name was Maya Rudolph. Everybody know Maya Rudolph." He argued me and said, "Hey, he's like, Rainbow, everybody ain't black. You always try to make everybody black, right?" And I was like, "She is black. I know a nigga when I see a nigga. That nigga's a nigga." Done. <laughs> Don't you play with me and my black dog. I be smelling them. I be smelling melanin. <laughs> I be smelling. Yes. Yeah. I be smelling. 
That's what I be doing. Okay. So he argued me, and I was like, she is black. Come to find out. Ha! It's Minnie Ripper's daughter. I was right. Black Dar is all. I got W's, baby. I don't know what the gang sign for W's is anymore. Mm. I don't. Does that still work? Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So to go back here, Puerto Ricans are the foundation for hip hop, right? Right. And yet, somehow, in this new wave of music, mm-hmm. we are questioning a Bruno Mars and a Cardi B mm-hmm. and questioning whether or not they are appropriating hip-hop music mm-hmm. and, and for Bruno Mars, R&B, so funk, uh, whatever wave he wants to uh, ride at that time. Right. Anybody's thoughts? Let me hear what your thoughts are on this. All right, so my... And then we'll get to Justin Timberlake and the whites. Yes. My my initial my initial thought is about cultural pro- appropriation overall. So where did Cardi B grow up? Did she grow up in New York? She grew up in the Bronx. Okay. She grew up in the so, Bronx. So like me, she grew up in a culture that was mm-hmm. different from the culture that her heritage is from, right? I grew up around all black people, okay. right? So if I do something that is known as something from black culture, am I appropriating that culture? Because it's my culture. It's where I grew up. Isn't that where culture comes from? Is where you came from? I damn Isn't hope. that your culture? Here we go again. I, okay. So, so on that end, yeah. So yeah. on that end, yeah. I'm gonna say, you know, it's it's overblown, right? Okay. People people take it too far. But then there's another side of it where people don't get upset enough because there's two. There's really two sides of the culture appropriation argument. See, the people overreact or they underreact. Mm. I, I feel so the underreaction yeah. is okay so she is not black yes she she clearly has said that she is not black that she is a latina right but she is she's she's quantified it as you know i'm saying no yo like they drop people off like everywhere so i mean you know like what does that even mean to be like you know latina to be black to be, you know, what does that even mean? Because, you know, like white folks, it's not like white folks like us all anyway. Because, you know, we as all minorities, like, and because I am part of uh, Mulatic, too. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, uh, uh, pussy dad, uh, pussy. you want my pussy. <laughs> That's it. That was. That was. We are on point with the impressions today. Okay. So, exactly, though. So, yeah. So, so. What is it that you're doing? You're taking what is the most popular yeah. and exploiting it mm-hmm. for your personal gain. Yes. Without furthering, without uh, crediting, without helping the culture that that came from. Okay. Okay. So so that's, that is the, the line that people cross and they don't. Okay. So, and this goes, does this go to the white folks like... Mm-hmm. Justin Timberlake. Does this does this apply? Because here's here's the thing, right? He's calling this album Man in the Woods. He literally you played the promo for me. If anyone has a see we had to stop playing promos because it gets our account shut down. They'd be like, Oh, y'all played it. And they be There's a tube that is for you mm-hmm. that I don't like. Whoa. Yeah. Josh- but I'm not gonna name no names. I'm not gonna name no names. <laughs> okay, not not you, tube of Ubers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. So you played a promo. Yes. And it had him in the woods hunting, it seemed like. A <laughs> he wasn't fight. hunting. He, he was, was running very frolicky. He was frolicking. He was. <laughs> and I think he was trying to make it look woodsman y, but it no. failed. He wasn't chopping a tree. It's only a. <laughs> listen, he, he, listen. Man if of there's the woods. anything that Justin. Oh, listen, we know Justin Timberlake ain't a man, ain't a man of the woods from his reaction. On what was it? There was some, I think it was maybe punk or something. Oh, yeah, it was punk. Do you remember punk? Classic. Listen, Classic. that's probably the greatest he punk. Out so quick. Oh my! I mean, his so ovaries quick. fell all the way out. Hold on now. He's a man of the womb. <laughs> Hold on now. Mama's boy. We'll talk, Mama's we'll talk boy. later. You know what, Ravo? Ravo. We'll, yeah. in the, we'll talk later. You're in trouble, buddy. <laughs> You're in trouble. I'm like, why do you gotta have ovaries, though? Well, that's what uh, Tiffany Haddish said. I'm... Oh, okay, I got it. Yes. Got you now. 
Recall. Yeah, I'm just pulling. Quoting. I'm pulling comedy out the mm-hmm. out the cloud. Bam. Out the cloud. I'm, yes. just, I'm just appropriating comedy. Yes. But you credited him. But I just credit Tiffany oh, Haddish. So it's oh. not. Can you get that for me? Sure. Is it closer to me? You want me to bend over like that? <laughs> bend over like that. Yeah. Like that. Is that like just that? like oh, <laughs> man, oh, ah, you good recall. Matt Lauer recall. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. So that's dope. Okay. So. <laughs> Here's my thought that I want to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I want you to make your statement. So Justin Timberlake, it bothers me about Justin Timberlake mm-hmm. and like the likes of Eminem and, and the likes of certain people, right? Uh, Justin Timberlake, when I was a kid, I saw him. I saw uh, Aaliyah. I saw Usher. I saw Britney Spears. I saw Christina Aguilera. I saw all of them perform on Star Search. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to go on Star Search one day like them. And I saw them all on it. Yep. And they became, I was like, oh, that was, he was on Star Search. Mm-hmm. And when he was on Star Search... He was performing what genre music, sir? Country music. Wait a minute. Hold on, time out. Are you telling me he wasn't performing R&B music? Nope. Wait, wait, wait. Not at all. He wasn't performing soul music? No, sir. He was performing what again? Country music. Country music. <laughs> Hanging on down by the man of the woods. I'm coming back down. Do what I could. Man of the woods. Man of the woods. <laughs> Who originally wrote that song? Uh, one of my favorites, uh, Spitter McGaffrey. <laughs> Sp- you never heard of Spitter I, McGaffrey? I haven't, I haven't. Oh, and you know who covered it? Who? Oh my God. My favorite cover of Man and Woods, yes. uh, was from the Alabama Nigger Wampers. <laughs> that was one of my favorite country artists. They covered Man of the Woods, yes. Yes. the Alabama Nigger Wampers. They are, guys, if you haven't heard the beautiful singing country stylings of the Alabama Nigger Wampers, <laughs> By all means, go to Google and put in. I want you to Google. Google it. I want you to put in Alabama, N I G G E R Wampers. W H O M P E R. Oh, brilliant country, brilliant Mm. country music musicians. Right. So, how did he get to to hip hop, pop, R and B? How? I I thought he was a fake. I always thought he was a fake. Um, I thought the machine was Mm -hmm. behind him, and I thought he appropriated it. And yes. Say la vie, yeah. you know. Uh, so I despise Justin Timberlake, but you have so many people that look like me that cape for Justin Timberlake because you know it's a good record, it's a good song. Like as soon as long as some good, and you said that, Ebony. You said you know if it's fun, mm-hmm. if it's good, then people ride with it. Yeah. You okay. know, so, so go ahead. So riding with it is is fine. Like oh yeah, I like that song. But at the uh, the other end of that is oh let's invite him into the fold. Because he did a song. Oh, a white boy did that? A, that white boy got sold. He comes to the picnic. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately. But here's the thing. Do you remember when you and I went to Ozfest? Yes. Do you remember which band was up there and they booed them off the stage? Do you remember what band that was and they booed them off the stage? Was it? Who was it? Was it, was it Bonefish? Was it? No, 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 sir. It was Jada Pinkett's band, Wicked Wisdom. Oh, they booed yes. them. Yes. They booed them off the stage. And yeah. I want to say this. And this is the problem that I have. You know, that some of this, let, let's go back. Because we, I think we, I think we skipped over this. I think, I think that the Bruno Mars, the Puerto Rican, the Dominican, the Afro-Latino, Afro-Latina uh, involvement in African-American music. You said something earlier. What did you say? About culture. That they're doing hip hop, that they're right. doing, you know, really black made music. Mm-hmm. And you said what? Uh, you mean during this or before when we before were Before when we were uh, in pre production. Remind me, I'm sorry. J. Cole said to the, fact, to the effect of, well, why don't they make Latin music? Mm-hmm. That's their culture. Mm-hmm. Why not do music that is authentic to their heritage mm-hmm. and their culture? Mm-hmm. And we, th- we was like, oh, whoa, that was a really different spin on it. And then Ebony, you guys came up with it that there's only go ahead. Yeah, so so Ebony brought up uh Despacito, right? Yeah. Which was huge last year, yeah. right? But you also brought up that uh Justin other Justin was involved in that, right? So Despacito was a big uh Spanish speaking song. And I was like, Well, what was the last one before that? Gasolina. <laughs> right. And Ebony was like, Oh, that was about ten years ago, yeah. maybe. And then you brought up Santana and Wyclef. Wyclef, Maria, and, Maria. Yeah, Maria, Maria. Yeah. Like, hmm, 
That was another 10, ten years. years. So, like, uh, Latin mainstream music, you get one they get every... one every decade. One every decade. Like, like y'all can time we can let another one in. Yeah, and we never let Asians in. No. Never. K- well, none yeah, of that. K-pop hasn't... It, it's, it's, it's not happening. You're not going to make K-pop happen. Let it go. Let it go. Please. Let it go. Please. We do not want to see bleached Koreans... Nobody who said they like K-pop is actually a fan of K-pop. Okay, you are you are a you total poser. Poser, you just want to be different. You want? No, 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 no. We got Gangnam Style. Y'all forgot about Gangnam Style. That wasn't. That was, that that was K-pop. Korean? But what was that? Yeah, no, no he, he was, was. He was something else. He's Korean though, was he? Was he? I don't yeah, know. yeah, he's Korean. Was okay. Style. Yeah. Was pretty, was what was the guy's name? What was his name? Fan. He had a one. Fan Dat. Fan. Dat Fan. Dat Fan. Dat Fan. Yeah, mm-hmm. and one of my one of my really good friends, she's Chinese. Uh, we were walking down the street, and some whites approached. Hey, gang was out. She's like, "Get the fuck away from me!" He you was. Ah, uh, uh, see. <laughs> oh no, that's the wrong. That fan is a comedian. Oh, okay. That's so right. I forgot. So whatever. We'll. I'll look it up because I want to know where Re- he's from. Uh, Reggie Mathis said, "Pitbull, Daddy Yankee." We said hits, Reggie. Reggie <laughs> always trying to come for me, man. Look, man. We talk. Look, name one. Daddy Pitbull. Yankee was Gasolina. Yeah, Daddy Yankee was. That gasoline. was that was his hit. And Pitbull never did a. Side. That was his name. Side. That was his name. Side. Side. Yeah. So we got a lot of comments here from this. Uh, let's let's see here. Uh, the uh, Reggie Math that starts with the problem with the term culture vulture is the true definition has been lost. It has. Uh, many rip. Uh, Karen A. Moore on Facebook said many Ripperton's daughter. She was talking about my comment yeah. about my Rudolph. All right. And she said, yes, uh, Reggie said, yes, culture is bigger than race. I think so. Uh, Nikila Shannon, author, said, uh, Woo Vicky is a culture vulture, not Cardi and Bruno. I don't even know who that is. Who? I don't know. Hmm. Woo Vicky. I don't know. See, she's pulling out some irrelevant people. (laughs) Uh, Karen A. Moore said, uh, there are so many Puerto Ricans who identify black because their ancestors were African slaves. Uh, Nurikens is a big movement. On the East Coast, yes, it is. Uh, Shalonda Lee, couldn't that be because his mama was his agent at the time? And I believe she's talking about uh, Justin oh, Timberlake. Timberlake right. yeah. But she, uh, I'm going to talk, okay, yeah, yeah, yep. talk about that. Okay, yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's stop there and talk about that. So, oh, hold on, hold on. Because yeah. Raphael has something. I don't know. Oh, okay, go so, ahead. And he, so he says, a lot of us Latinos grew up in mostly black neighborhoods. So a lot of us ended up being drawn to black artists. Oddly enough, Spanish trap music and becoming more popular in cities like New York, Miami, and Los Angeles. So they're taking what they were inspired by and returning to a Latin form. It's still very new, though. Okay, but, and I I agree with that because that goes to the point that I made about what you're growing up around. But that ain't what she does. She does have a song called La Modelo. She does. Does she? With a uh, Spanish speaking rapper. Okay. See, I don't know none of her songs, but. The one. Right. Okay. So here's, let me make. Bloody shoes. Stop. (laughs) I don't have to dance more. I make money moves. Right? Yep. Yeah, okay. And then I just love that she keeps showing off her new teeth. Like, I I love that. (laughs) Yeah. I love that. She keeps showing off that new mouth. Okay? I got a new mouth, baby. Show it off. Be proud of it. Okay. So here's what I want to say about appropriation of being a vulture. Like, here's. Here's really what I want to say. Mm-hmm. And this is my problem. And I, I think that I haven't heard anyone else say it. But I do not like how when it's someone on the lighter side of the paper bag test mm-hmm. do anything mm-hmm. from any island, from this nation. If, Like you said, remember when we would watch um, what's the, the Apollo and anybody white could come out and they jumping up out they seat. They stomping around, they rolling around because this white person saying, and I am telling you, yeah. sound just like yeah. this. Yeah. And they like, yes! Ooh! And they just, you're like, yeah. wait a minute, they sound horrible. But a black person, boo, get your old black ass off the stage! <laughs> Beat it, nigga! <laughs> right? We just, we hate on each other, right? Yeah. Man, I can't, I'm so... <laughs> <laughs> so 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 we when it's someone on one side of the spectrum of the paper bag test mm-hmm. we immediately elevate them to these olympian heights that they are superior 
right? Mm -hmm. So my problem is, is that anyone on the darker end of that test that historically are not deemed as valuable. Mm -hmm. When you have all the brown to dark skin performers who are out here giving us life. Who we we had a production meeting and they they mentioned Adele, right? Right. right. And boy, I'm gonna tell you, these black women. I'm gonna tell you, Jantina yep. and Ebony yep. Chappelle was like, oh, and Lettucey, and I mean, they name how many people? Come on, who are the John? Uh, Jasmine Sullivan, Jill Jasmine, Jill Sullivan. Jill Jasmine Sullivan, Jill Sullivan. Jasmine Sullivan. Yep. right, Lovell. right. And you all said that she can all of them. Layla, Layla, Layla can out sing yep. Adele, right? Right. Yes. But they put this one. Up as some type of savior to our music that ain't went nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. So here's my problem. I believe in my heart of hearts is that if the playing field of the machine's choices, if there was a counterpart, tell me right now who the brown to dark skin counterpart is to Cardi B or to Bruno Mars that have the same level of success. If anyone can tell me that, then we would say that it's overblown, that the playing field is very level. Mm -hmm. However, it is not. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as Beyonce drops some new music, she's a goddess, she's life, she's giving me life, she's everything, right? We keep everybody on the lighter spectrum gets so much push. We talked about K-pop. Right. And we all know, if you've ever seen real Koreans, in it, they have darker hued Koreans, and we all know they have a bleaching epidemic over yeah, there. Yeah. They have a bleaching epidemic because yep. light is right. Mm -hmm. And I think that what I feel when I say it, I'm speaking for me, I'm not speaking for everyone else out there. What I feel is that Cardi B is celebrated when someone like Rhapsody, mm -hmm. right? Someone like Rhapsody, who was an amazing MC. Mm -hmm. wh where's the push for her? Why isn't she featured on the Finesse remix? Why isn't she given that push? Mm -hmm. Why not? Right. You know, where are all the, you know, like Estelle had, Estelle's biggest record back in the day was with Kanye. Yeah. They both the same hue and it went how far? Now, if it was somebody white, if it was Amy Winehouse right. and, you know, some, some rapper or something, it would have been how big of a record. Yep. Right? And then, yeah. and then we look at like television, right? What was the show? Friends, right? But before that, we had... Of what? Single. Of living single. Yep. You take it. You take the black thing that's successful in the black world. You yep. make it white or light, and it becomes big. And I think that's what we're all really, really true. I, I, I can't say for everybody. For me, I get upset about mm -hmm. that because I'm looking for someone that looks like me to have that success. I can't tell you what black artist, like mm -hmm. historically recognizable black artist, has had the success that Bruno Mars has just copied, like he is literally copying and pasting all these different decades sounds right. and taking his little uh, ass up on stage and he's he's so small. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so I'm glad you brought that okay. point up because if, if a black person did that exact same thing, they'd be biting. Yeah, oh my, God, yes. Oh, they biting. They they can't. They not original. They biting. But another person, I was like, oh, they're doing this. They're paying homage or whatever they're doing. Oh. No, you not. You thieving. You thieving. Hmm. Oh, that's what you yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yes. And and people people are mixed on 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 him. I am not a Jay Z fan. They had this whole. No, no, they said Diddy. He, no, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah but I'm, I'm saying in addition to that, they have a whole rap mixture where they'll play somebody's lyric and then Jay Z taking that exact lyric. So yeah, and and people call him a biter, right? And and it's it is that that crab in the barrel mentality. Like we're not good enough to one another. Like we literally, the only way one of us gets up is if one of them elevates us. Like, and by one of them, I mean someone in the machine, and mm -hmm. by the machine, we mean white Whites. people. Yep. So let's let's be very clear yep. here, right? Yeah. And I, you and I had this discussion. I was like, the last brown to dark-skinned woman that dominated pop, R&B, this genre, was probably Mary J. Blige. Mm -hmm. Was the, the last queen, everybody else after that, mm -hmm. like, I mean, Everybody else after that. And and we do it because I was saying this to uh, Ebony off camera. I said, I believe our problem is, is that we keep co-signing because. OK, before you say yes. that, to hold yes. that thought, because Reggie says, Ramon, your beef, is, Javier Benitez, your beef is with white America. Yes. Yeah. OK. That's what. But 
it's not all the way with white America. Because finish that point. Okay. So thank you for that. That's a great side producer. So um, did you just chuckle at that? Okay. No. So <laughs> here's here's my thought here is everyone is side eye and they're waiting to see what the brown to dark skins say because we are the creators of cool we are mm. we are the innovators of cool like let's cut through the bs and this is not i'm just being real and so when everyone in the mainstream goes oh they think it's cool go 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 they like it they think that's dope go 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 and then it's like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. shut up shut up, shut up. Right. we we got it now we got, we got it, it now right, right. and so what happens is is that once the mainstream, once the machine gets it, then guess who is still co-signing, who's still purchasing it? We are. We, we keep purchasing it. We won't just stand up and say, okay, that's good, but y'all need to look over here too. Like you said, Rhapsody fans go hard for pushing her, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, though, like, are we pushing her to the Olympian heights or are we pushing her to the same heights that all of us get to? But I think she's not ready for a Grammy. Okay. They, listen, listen. Okay. Jeff Toll was nominated for a <laughs> Grammy, okay? Y'all like, who? Dixie's Midnight Riders mm -hmm. won a Grammy. I Go think ahead. the Alabama... Uh, oh, Alabama uh, Nigger Wampers? I think they got Oh, they nominated. got about... No, they got about seven Grammys, yes. man. Bluegrass, Country Soul, right. uh, uh, Western Doo-Wop. I mean, they... <laughs> Western Doo-Wop. That happened. Lord. It happened. I mean, yeah. Alabama nigga Whoppers, that's my favorite group. Um, <laughs> let's see, Gentina, yes. Tell me well, what she said, Lisa Faye said they want a soulful sound, but not from black people. Yes. And then Gentina, who is here, but also commenting, thank you, said, yes, Stephanie Mills went on record and said the same thing, hashtag truth. Yeah, it's, it, it's very real. And I just... She's still touring and busting her ass, but she should be on... Um, uh, yeah. Why? Why does she have a spot in Vegas? How come she doesn't have a show in Vegas? Mm -hmm. You know, like it's. I, and, but that's the question I always want to pose. Like, why is it? And I want to say this: Why is it that anyone from the opposite side of the paper bag tests down? Why aren't our voices really heard? Why do we always say? And I think I know why. I think I'm going to answer because we're afraid to sound like the bitter black person that mm -hmm. we're the ones technically that get hit with that mm -hmm. the bitter black woman the angry black man and if we say anything mm -hmm. all you're hating that's that's from our community then from people that look like you then oh you're a bitter you're a bitter black woman you're an angry black man so for the last decades we've learned that's to just kind of yes yeah, so you just kind of have to just sit back and let it happen so, to you and next thing you know you hashtagging me too yeah i was about to say though no i was about to say so where's the it, me too movement for the black community no i'm i'm but that's what the women, that's what these women were talking about. Like, where is it? Like, you know, and I wanted them to say it, but they didn't. But when black women were being killed by police mm -hmm. and beat up by police, where were yes. those women yes. who are now talking about, sister, sister, let's band together. Come on, come on. Can I touch your hair? Can I touch your locks? <laughs> what is that, pink oil moisturizer? <laughs> what is that, blue magic? Is that shea butter? Is that shea butter? I know about shea butter. <laughs> You're my sister. Help me! Save me! <laughs> Please! That's it. Is that it? I think we need to end That's the thing. Uh, any other comments? Mm -mm. Uh, no, too black. Too black. Mm. Yeah, you know, so let me say this, guys. Let me let me try to read off. Um, hey, what up, John L. Bear, my man? Sean Lee, Keith Janelle. Hopkins, uh, Karen A. Moore, Nikila, Shannon Arthur, whose show will be debuting yes. soon. Yes. On the fifth column fifth network. Column, Nikita Shannon. And her soon to be yeah. husband, her beau, Stacy. Stacy. They're gonna have an amazing show here. Huh? Majors. Stacy Majors. Mm. They're gonna have an amazing show. Yep. Uh Reggie Saritha. Saritha Love is watching. Thank you for watching. Uh Leah Beatty, uh, thank you for commenting and, and watching always. Definitely. Uh B Martin, thank you. Uh Derek Tatum, what's good? Karen A. More, uh, let's see, who else do we have? Aaron here? Brumfield said Aaron, you're right oh, on the border with that paper bag test. Th hey, Allison Powell. Hey, what's up, Allie? Uh, Ant, he's watching. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see who else. Uh, Raphael, thanks for the yes, comment, Raphael, bro. That's, that was a, that was a great. We need that perspective. Thank that you. was a great. Bridget Collins, thank you for watching. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. Uh, Lisa Faith. <laughs> 
Uh, let me see. Gentina is in studio, so I'm not going to shout her out. <laughs> yeah. You just did. Uh, my little cousin, who's actually, I wish she was my sister. Uh, she's watching. Hey, Gwen. Hey, girl. Uh, and I just want to say, Aaron Brumfield, my dog, you need to come on the show. Uh, you're right on the border with that paper bag test. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for watching and participating. I, I had a great time. Oh, uh, yeah, Gentina, did you enjoy your time this, this week? Always. 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 Thank you. Uh, cool. Ebony, uh, how much? Trouble in mind? Do I, do I have to go? Yeah, but did you, what you gonna read that comment from Two Black? From, oh, who? from, from who? I thought you said Two Black had a comment. No, 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 no that was no, someone no. said, said two, black. two Black. That was their comment. Okay. Two Black, Two Black, Two Black, Two Black, Blackie. <laughs> Better run for cover. Better run for shade so you don't stay Two Black, Two Black, Two Black, babe. You know, and that's awful, man. Like, I, real quick, you know, we all grew up when you were called an African booty scratcher, mm -hmm. you were like, and yeah. it's like to be weaponized your culture and heritage against you as a negative yep. is awful, you know? And, and I have been, luckily for me, it is a very weird place because I have a complexion that's very strange where for some people I'm dark skinned. Right. This one, this one woman said, cause yo, uh, light skin, light -skin right. I'm like, Whoa, ma'am. <laughs> Whoa, ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> Are you, sure? Are you take a look at it? No, okay. So she's from the deep south, though. So like anybody above, you know, yeah. you light skin, yeah. and then probably my ways. I have a lot of light skin to white skin ways. ways. I ways. have a lot of light skin ways. That's true. I have a lot of white skin ways. White skin ways. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I am the opposite. You are definitely the opposite. <laughs> You are, I introduced you to heavy metal yes, and you, you, did. you was like, man, don't nobody want to listen to this. What you need to be listening to. I'm your baby tonight. He was like, man, nigga, this is the track. Like, oh, I'll send it again, sir. That's okay. Okay. He had a, he had a Kango. I he even called himself LL Cool LL Josh. LL Cool Josh. It's <laughs> <laughs> my man. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the um, Sunday edition. We, we should sign off as Cardi B and Justin Timberlake. You want to do that? Yeah. You know, I just want to say to everybody out there that, like, you know, watch the Sunday Disney you know, FDN. I'm uh, glad you guys watched. Yeah. I'm glad you guys see it yeah. today. I'm going to go out singing the troll song. <laughs> Damn it, I don't remember how it goes. I don't remember how it goes. All right, thank y'all for joining the Sunday Edition. <laughs>